Okay, let's talk about DX Feed. The Tasty Trade API comes with access to DX Feed, the profile, quote, summary, trade, and Greeks market events. Let's dive into our Tasty Trade library and see how we can use them for ourselves. First, I'm going to be using a small test script instead of our increasingly complicated TastyBot Discord bot for this video. As always, if you have any questions or need help, feel free to reach out to me in the comments, on Twitter, or on our Discord channel. By the way, there is some housekeeping we need to do. I've been using AIO Comet D, but it does have a problem that you need to fix in the code itself. I fixed it myself without actually diving too deep into what I did, but there's another library, TastyTrade AIO Comet D, that fixes the problem for you. So if you've run into a problem using the original library, give the other one a try and see if that fixes it for you. Now, our test script here will skip past doing a lot of the basic things like logging in, account validation, and token fetching. All right, let's wrap our heads around what DX feed is. What we have access to with the TastyTrade API is essentially a real-time data streaming platform. This took me a minute to conceptually wrap my head around, but it's easier to understand if you think of the data coming from DX feed as a variable that is continually updated with the latest data. The only trick is that you've got to request that data and then parse it. That's where the DX feed part of our library comes in. We need to subscribe to specific events to get the right data we need. I've gone over this before, but I feel like a refresher is in order. The workflow is fairly simple. We connect to TastyTrade, fetch the DX feed streamer token, connect to DX feed with the streamer token, and then we tell DX feed what data we want to have constantly pumped into us. Obviously, there are some quirks to this workflow, otherwise this video would have come out a month ago. Also, I lost my job, so, you know, there's that. The first thing that's different is that DXFeed is not expecting OCC-style symbology. That's the one that TastyTrade uses. It has its own symbology that we've got to use. This symbology is simple, at least when it comes to fetching real-time equity and options data. Now, for this example, we'll be fetching options data from Microsoft, ticker MSFT. Also, I need to mention we're using some nutty asynchronous function to constantly loop and fetch data from DXFeed. We need to do this because of the AIO Comet D library we're using. It's a bit of a pain in the butt to work this way, but it'll help us out in the long run. We'll be able to parse out the DXFeed data and treat it like any other variable in the rest of the program. So, after we connect to DXFeed, we need to subscribe to the events we want. For MSFT right now, I'm only interested in the summary and trade data. Summary will only return data to us once, while trade will constantly refresh us with new data. I'm not going to go over summary data. That's very straightforward. If you don't know what day low price and open interest means, you're probably watching the wrong video. Trade data, on the other hand, is what's really important here. Trade data will continually update us each time there's a new tick of data. At least... I think it's on a per tick basis. I'm not 100% sure on how often the data gets updated, but for our purposes, it's pretty fast. If you request trade data on a symbol with a ton of volume, you should expect to parse that data multiple times per second. Trade data includes the following. Event symbol is the symbol you requested. Event time is, I don't know, not exactly sure, but for everything I've tested, it's apparently always zero. Hit me up if you know. Time is the time in milliseconds the data was sent. Time nano part is... I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. For me, it's always been zero, and the documentation isn't particularly clear. If you know what it is, hit me up. A sequence is a sequence counter, so you can discard data that might be sent out of order. For our purposes, our data is sent over a web socket, so generally speaking, sequences are not going to come out of order. Exchange code is the exchange code that the underlying is traded on. The price is the current price that the underlying is printing at. Change is the change in price since, I believe, the opening price, but I might be wrong on that. Size is the size of the last trade made on the underlying. Day ID is some kind of identifier for the trading day the data was sent on. Day volume is obviously the underlying's volume traded for the day so far. Day turnover is, I had to look this up, the ratio of sellers versus buyers for the day. Extended trading hours is a boolean, true or false, which lets you know if there are extended trading hours for the underlying. Generally, this is going to be false. 
Finally, there's tick direction, which can be either up, down, zero, zero down, zero up, or undefined. I've never seen tick direction be anything other than zero, zero down, or zero up. And I honestly couldn't tell you what the difference is between up down and zero up, zero down. And the DX feed documentation isn't very enlightening. So we know how to get summary and trade data for an underlying. How do we get options data? I could be a prick and tell you that you need to do some complicated nonsense and translate OCC style symbology to DX feed symbology. Or I could just tell you that you can use the tasty trade option chains API call to get the data yourself. That's where this beautiful line of code comes in. The option chains method does exactly what you think it does. It fetches the option chains for an underlying. In our example, we're going to fetch the option chains for MSFT, and then discard the excess data that we don't need. By the way, this is just a little side note that I didn't put in the script. This is worth its weight in gold. As terrible as some things about the API can possibly be, this right here was a really heavy lift by the Tasty Trade team, and my hat's off to them. Thank you so much for doing this, because it would have been a nightmare trying to do this on my own. Now, the data Tasty Trade sends us looks something like this. The important data we need right now is in the expirations array. The expirations array can be loaded with daily, weekly, and regular expiration type options. It'll also give us the expiration date, days to expiration, and the strikes. For the purposes of this video, what we're going to care about are the strikes. And the strikes themselves are really easy to read. It lists the strike price, as well as the symbology for both the call and the put side, but it also lists the DX feed symbology for that strike price. That's where we're going to get our streamer symbols from, because I don't feel like dicking around and converting OCC symbology to DX feed symbology when Tasty Trade has done it for us. So, now that we know where our symbology is coming from, let's figure out which symbols we want to pull the streaming data for. I mean, I guess you could try to pull data for every symbol in the option chains, but I'm not 100% sure if DXFeed would cut you off, if Tasty Trade would cut you off, or if your computer would explode. So we're just going to pull data for two different symbols, the at the money call and put for the active month. By the way, in this case, I'm defining the active monthly cycle as the expiration that's greater than or equal to 21 days away. And if it's less than 21 days, I'm just choosing the next monthly cycle. That's all I'm trying to do in this loop. And really, that's it. Now all that's left is to subscribe to the correct options feed in DX feed. That's really all this big old if else block is about. We're just checking if the at the money symbols have changed. And if they have, we stop streaming data from the old symbols and start streaming data from the new ones. Because with this example, all we really care about is the at the money stuff. Everything else we can just ignore for now. Of course, to get the data we're actually after, the data options traders like us care about, we need to subscribe to something else, the quotes feed. The way we've written our little library, this is pretty simple. We just use the dxevent.quote event type and subscribe to that. The quote data type is a little different, but it's not terrible. There's only a little bit of new data we have to parse. Bid or ask time, which is the time the last bid or ask came through. The bid or ask exchange code, which is the exchange where the last bid or ask was received. The bid or ask price, which is the current bid or ask price and the bid or ask size, which is the size of the last bid or ask. Oh, and I need to mention, this is all transmitted as an array, so we're referencing everything by numbers in the code, rather than something more legible like in a dictionary, but you can live with that, can't you? So DXFeed sends over two arrays. The first one has the names of each parameter, and the second one has its values. I could not be lazy and map that to a dictionary in Python, but I am lazy, and I'm leaving that up as an exercise to the viewer, because in reality, you're going to want to map these values correctly in Python, because it's likely that their orientation may change in the future. So, eh, I'm being lazy here. You can make up for my laziness. Now, why is any of this data important to us? Because now we can calculate the bid-ask spread. As an options trader, the bid-ask spread is often used as a sign of liquidity, so a tighter spread means easier fills. All we have to do is subtract the bid from the ask, and we get our spread. 
Also, I'm wrapping the data here as a string in the decimal library because of Python's weird rounding errors that can crop up. In this case, I was subtracting 745 from 755 and getting 0 0.0999 repeating. This code just works around that and fixes those annoying rounding errors. This isn't accurate if you're looking for accuracy beyond four or five decimal places, but for our purposes, this accuracy is good enough. We're not rocket scientists, we're degenerate traders. So, what did all of this get us? We now have access to the data feed a dictionary, which we've pre-populated with the Microsoft ticker symbol MSFT. While our thread loops for eternity fetching updated quote data from DX feed, the rest of our program can simply access data feed whenever it wants and get the latest data. In our example code, all we have to do is type in spread and it will spit out the current bid ask spread of the at the money front month options. And there you have it. This was way easier once I managed to wrap my head around what DX feed was actually doing. And that's it for this video. If you've been following along, I'll be updating TastyBot with some new code that utilizes this data. But for the videos themselves, we'll be sticking with small example programs for here on out so as to not confuse everyone with all of the weird stuff we have to do in that bot. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment, hit me up on Twitter, or join us on Discord. And if you could, please give this video a like and let me know that it was helpful. Or hell, harass Tony on Twitter. Let him know you want to see more content like this. He is the head of all talent at Tasty Live, after all. Until next time, rock on.